Welcome back everyone. If you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Amy and today I'm going to do another Q&A. I got all your questions on my Instagram. If you don't follow me there, definitely do. That's where I ask you guys my questions for my Q&A. First question is from Lizzie C. Your next trip, I want to go to Hawaii as my next trip because that was the trip that I had to cancel with my family and was going to take my mom because she's never been to Hawaii. And we were gonna go to Hawaii for the first time for her in May of 2020. My mom lives in Eastern Canada. I'm in Western Canada. So we're five, six hour flight away from each other. So it's not that easy to coordinate and plus the risk of flying and just your personal comfort level, of course. So I'm not even sure when we can actually resume travel comfortably, personally. So that's just something that we still have to figure out. Um, but for sure, Hawaii is one of the destinations. I did book a flight for my parents finally this year for them to come visit in June. So hopefully that goes without any issues. And I know they will be super paranoid, especially my mom. She will be super paranoid. She'll probably be wearing a mask the whole time on the plane and never even taking a sip of water. I know her, that's what she'll do. But if that's what makes her comfortable, then, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So hopefully everything will be fine. And yeah, otherwise I would love to just go back and go home and visit my hometown. Next question from Annie's. What pieces are you generally the most likely to buy when it comes to ready to wear, luxury ready to wear? We have four very distinct seasons here in Canada. So it gets really hot, it gets really cold, and then in the middle. So I need all kinds of tops. Jackets, tops, cardigans, sweaters, those are all things that I would be more open to buying luxury. By the way, if you guys haven't seen my last unboxing, 22P unboxing, which I just posted a couple days ago, watch it because I revealed a bunch of really, really cute clothes. This is one of them as well. And they are so, so Chanel-esque. Very, very cute, very affordable. You probably will have a hard time choosing all the cute clothes. Anyway. Anyway, just watch it if you haven't already. Um, so yeah, I think for me it would be t-shirts, sweaters, um, wool sweaters, wool jackets, and also dresses. I own a lot of dresses from Self Portrait. Uh, they are considered contemporary luxury. A forever fashion lover. Love your channel. Would you ever consider doing YouTube full time in the future? Yes, I would. But as you know, it's not that easy i think to make it you can be a personality you can have a million subscriber and still not make a lot of money because it all comes down to being resourceful because if you just rely on adsense for example like all the ad monetization on your videos um, that doesn't add up to as much as most people think, even if you have lots and lots of views. And so not only do you need a solid fan base, like people that do watch you regularly, but you also need to be resourceful in other ways of subsidizing the financial aspect. It can be sponsorship, it can be making your own product, it can be uh, offering your own services. Everything combined together has to be able to replace what I minimally need on a yearly basis, right? Or on whatever, basically what I need to survive, to pay for my essentials. It's kind of a double-edged sword, right? You are maybe less stressed from a job that you prefer less, but at the same time, you love what you're doing, but you got to survive, right? So it's sort of, maybe it's a timing issue. Eventually, I would love to do it full time for sure. And just really concentrate on making content. Hem Shara Mami, I just want you every Hermes happiness you so well deserve. Oh, thank you so much. That is such a sweet comment. Rem RZ Metz, are you still enjoying your Lady Dior? As a matter of fact, I am. Um, does it mean that I have used it a ton? Not at all. Um, I probably still haven't really used it since the last time I did, which is, I don't remember. It's been a minute, 
but and also I removed the twilly as per a lot of you said to remove it and just to use it whenever I need to which uh, I think is a good advice because after I removed it I could see because I did tight tighten it pretty good and I could see that there were a couple lines behind it but it did fade away which is good good uh, so definitely remove your twillies especially if you have really wrapped it tightly because it's a classic and when I bought this bag I had the intention of buying it despite you know the fact that it doesn't retain value uh, it's a small very mini size it's not an everyday bag Despite all of that, I did decide to go for it because I just have been loving this bag for so long. I really bought it because I loved the bag. And yes, I haven't used it. Obviously, it's because of the pandemic. And also, um, it's not an everyday bag. So I'm not really going to use it now when I need to go out. I'm only running errands, so I'm, I'm not using it for that reason. So it's just been sitting in my collection but i'm happy to know that i do own it especially with all the price increases this bag has gone up by i think a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars i don't even remember i i don't even know the price now anymore so it's just one of those things where i know it's going to be a staple in my collection and i know that whenever i do have more functions like weddings i am attending a wedding this this year in the summer hopefully it will happen hopefully nothing else kind of disrupts all the plans so i'll be wearing this so as a matter of fact yes i am still enjoying it but not really enjoying it as in i'm not really using it it's just that i'm happy that i have it in my collection and it's just a a one-of-a-kind type of bag in my collection because everything else I own is super different everything else I own is Chanel, LV, Celine, Hermes uh, it's mostly Chanel of course T Cabez 129 would you tell your essay when you're satisfied with your collection um, that you will not shop as much no I don't think I will ever tell my essay because first of all I know myself I will always be attracted to something and it will be something different it, it may not be handbags which i am buying more handbags well for the past few years i've been buying mostly handbags but have you not noticed in the more recent years i'm buying clothes i'm buying all kinds of different accessories shoes things that i never really used to buy when i was building my collection so i'm always going to be attracted to something new therefore i don't really want to let my essay know that i'm going to slow down or anything because i don't think it's slowing down i think it's just changing what i'm buying you want your essay to remember you whenever there's something good that came in right unless my essay was so aggressive or too aggressive which they are not i will not tell them that i'm slowing down or that i'm not going to buy as much because i i would be missing out so much i feel so uh, yeah, unless they're very aggressive and unless I don't like the essay, then yes, I might tell them. But otherwise, no, 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 not at all. How many quota bags do you realistically want from Hermes and how many years in the journey? Wow, okay, great question. I'm watching a number of different Hermes lovers, YouTubers out there. A lot of them are in a different language in, in the Cantonese. Even they say, and I've noticed that for myself, that Initially, you get into Hermes because you want to buy their quota bags. But the longer you are a client with the house, because not only do you have to pre-spend to get those bags, the more you really just really love the brand because you actually appreciate and you want to buy everything from the brand. The more I kind of acquired all the different things from the house, the more I really appreciate every single item because they are so uh, well thought out and sometimes they're very simple but that's what you want in a way and so um i feel like i will be a client for many many years i can't say for how long possibly for the rest of my life i feel so that is saying a lot right and in terms of how many quarter bags do i want depending on where you're from uh, the constants is considered a quarter bag here so therefore i am counting the constants um, so as of today, in 2022, I, I already have five quarter bags in mind that I want. But who knows, in five, ten years, I might be wanting to add other things or other quarter bags so that number can change. But as of today, I do want five, five distinct quarter bags. Um, 
in my collection. Michelle Windy, Chanel Classic or Seasonal if you can only choose one, assuming you like both equally. Um, that is a tough one because I only own one classic and the rest of my bags are seasonal. But, well, actually, how, how, do you, how do you define classic? Do you mean just the classic flop? Or do you also define the Chanel 19, the Trendy CC, the Coco Handle? Are you defining those as classics? Because they are kind of classic. They do make them all the time. So technically, I own all kinds of classics, but they are seasonal. If money is no object, then for sure classics just strictly all classic flops in all different sizes, colors, materials, I, I would be down for that. But the reality is that uh, they are extremely overpriced unless I have unlimited funds, unless I was really, really rich and don't have a, a worry in terms of financial needs, then everything will be classic. But, I f but also I will get bored and I will just want to add everything else that is non-classic. How many bags would you bring with you when you travel and how to keep them secure? Okay, good question. So when I travel, I normally don't bring more than two bags. That is of course not counting my uh, Longchamp tote because that one is, that one is just my travel luggage in a way. So I have my luggages of course, and then I have my Longchamp tote, which is my travel, bag my travel luggage that I bring on board the plane but in terms of like you know like a proper luxury very expensive handbag I will typically not bring more than two I also plan my outfits in a way so depending on how my outfits look which bag will go with most of the outfits that's how I choose them uh, but typically in the past I have brought um, always in, in the past I have brought my mini square because mine is in caviar it's in black color so it goes with virtually everything and the other bag that I have brought in the past was Palm Springs mini which I don't own anymore because mine was defective returned it and I never was able to replace it but that one was a good one as well because not only are they both very small bags so they're very easy to pack into my luggage my travel um, carry on and in case I need even more space then I just use my Longchamp tote because it's still a nice tote right mine is in a limited edition, limited edition canvas print so I, I still can use the canvas tote what is your occupation I have spoken about it in the past and uh, it's nothing really glamorous I am an IT professional I have experience in many aspects of IT as you know IT is very broad, uh, but I have done anywhere from software engineering to project management, which is the most current. Denise Wow, uh, which bags will you never sell to pass on? And is this a consideration before selling? Usually no. Handbags, fashion, dressing up, being girly, all those things are my interests and my hobby, which no one else in my family shares, believe it or not. I don't mean that all the females or males in my family are uh, not into dressing up and all that stuff. Um, they can be, but not to the level that I am at. And um, I don't actually know if anybody in my family are comfortable to carry, say, uh, a $6,000 bag. So this this very expensive hobby and and love of love affair of mine is is very personal so i don't really consider whether uh is something that i need to pass down before i sell i cannot enforce my hobby and my likes onto someone else because they're gonna have no use for it um so yeah that is why. And second of all, I'm very, very protective of my things. If the individual in question is a very clumsy and just not have a care for, for like wear and tear type of person, uh, I'm never letting them touch my handbags. They're not going anywhere near. <laughs> Let's just put it this way. So, um, yeah, so that's why I don't really think about 
whether I need to pass down a certain item before I sell it. Now, granted, it doesn't mean that I won't pass down nothing. <laughs> I, I would like to pass down my most cherished items. And that includes many, many people that I really cherish. And that won't be for a while. I really intend to use everything I own until I'm too old and too frail to use them. And then I'll pass them down. So that's gonna be a while, right? Mini footprints, what is your daily skincare routine? I feel like I get asked this question quite frequently, but my answer is always boring because I don't have a very elaborate skincare routine and even my products, they're very, very simple. Aside from the fact that I do choose the ingredients uh, in my products, or I mean, I choose products with ingredients that are very clean. So um, I don't do anything special aside from treatments in between if my skin is not doing well. But on a daily basis, my current face wash is from the same brand as this one, which is New Co. It's a very clean brand from Canada, actually from Alberta. I will link it down below and it's just um, like broccoli extracts. So that's the cleaner that I use. And after I clean my face, I will just spray a toner. This is just Rose Petal Facial Tonic Hydrosol from Yvonne Healy. And literally there's just one ingredient, which is rose petals. So I just spray that on my face and I pat it down. After I tone, I have started using this, which is, I think, was a one of the game changer in helping my skin stay hydrated and also uh, oil control. So this one is also very, very new. I've never talked about this yet, but it's from also um, a local company, Truly Brightening. So it's the company Truly, which is also Canadian. It's actually based in Vancouver. And this is the Truly Brightening Vitamin C. I just use one drop of this for all, all, all over my face after toning. And after that, I will use my eye cream, which is again from Nuco, and it's the Brocco Fusion um, with mushroom extract and broccoli extract. And this cream is really, really good. I also use the facial cream of this one, but I did run out. So I'm currently using this lotion, which is Clear Life Ocean Minerals Hyaluronic Moisturizer. There's really nothing super crazy. It's just, it's just a light texture moisturizer. I don't have a ton of issues with my skin. I've been really lucky. That way, um, I never had cystic acne. I, I, I never even had acnes that much. In fact, I get more breakouts as I age, which is very strange. Um, so I do have some scarring from more recent breakouts. But I also wanted to mention, I love this lip balm, Yvonne Healy, the Whip Shea Butter. This is the best lip balm ever. So I use this also as my routine because my lips and my skin is on the drier side. In terms of treatment, I do use this machine and I have talked about this. I made a whole dedicated review. This is a Hydra facial machine and uh, I'll just link to the video. You can watch it if you like. So I do use this on my face whenever I feel like it's getting clogged and it's just not as smooth as it normally can. So your skin regen your skin cells, they regenerate every 28 days or something like that. So that's when you want to sort of give it that extra boost, that extra treatment. So the Hydra Facial kind of helps you clear your skin. It helps boost collagen and allows your skin to um, heal faster and to to come back to a, a normal. So I just used it. So the device is actually in my washroom because it's drying. Um, but it usually is just it comes with a device. You have all these attachments. Anyway, I have a full review on this little um, lifesaver for me. Honestly, I do use it every month, just once a month. Like I said, just in between your skin changing cycles, um, you just give it a treatment and it's just so good. And aside from that, one other thing that I started doing is I started using red light therapy, but I didn't really use it on my face. I just use it for my joints, so for my hands, for my back, for my, uh, for my knees. But because it's infrared light basically, right, and I have this uh, machine, I'll just put a cutaway. I have this machine and it's about this big. So I, I didn't choose the base model, which is just like a handheld. I, I did choose the more 
the one that is more robust that can cover more area and I have noticed that it helps with my skin in general and it is proven to help with skin um, issues as well if especially if you do use it regularly when I do my neck because I do the back of my neck and my shoulders uh, you know as I turn or even when I do my hands that light still comes onto your face so I feel like it has been helping too there's a lot of signs behind it I'm not gonna get into it unless you guys want to know but uh, there's so many different videos that you can watch and and you just Google it and, and find out for yourself. But I have um, but I have noticed that the red light therapy that I did, um, I have started since uh, January, has also helped my overall, yeah, overall skin, which is great because I actually don't wear any foundation. I don't know if you guys have noticed that I stopped wearing foundation, hence you don't really see the, because usually my face is even paler. But now I only wear concealer like right around here because that's where all my freckles are. So I just wear concealer under my eyes and that's it. That's my skincare routine. Um, very boring in a way, but I do think that everything adds up, right? Like your diet, everything is um, affects your skin. If you get enough sleep, it, it, it improves your skin. If you don't get enough sleep, it breaks your skin. If you don't eat well, it will break your skin as well. So everything has to line up last question by lily bay there were many easy releases this month was your husband able to score some models no he hasn't been actually he's been so unlucky this year and apparently according to our feng shui, feng shui episode that we did um his sign his luck is not so good so i feel like could be true <laughs> i feel like he's not been so lucky with all the shoe releases he hasn't been able to get most of the uh if not yeah i think most most of the releases any releases not just easies he hasn't been able to get i think yeah i think that's pretty devastating for him and i hear about it every day so no he hasn't been and it i know it's normal completely normal because not everyone's gonna win the 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 draw for having a chance to even buy those really limited uh, sneaker releases yes he's a sneaker head for those of you who don't know but um it's hard it's hard sometimes i feel like it's harder than me getting bags at least with bags or luxury items as long as your essay is looking out for you and you do buy often right you're a regular client you 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 can get stuff <laughs> not every time but you can that concludes the end of my q a i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you all so much for your questions if you're new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe i would love to have you back also do support me further by becoming a channel member where you get even more exclusive content thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you guys again very soon bye